It's time to be well with your health. I'm Nimit. I'm Shanna. Welcome to Adventist Healthcare and You Podcast. How are you doing, Shanna? I'm good. We have a good topic today and an excellent special guest. You know, as someone with a sweet tooth, I was not surprised to find out that National Confectioners Association found that 85% of Americans enjoy chocolate and other sweet treats. And many even consider that as an essential part of their diet. That's, 85%? It's yes. more than I think. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Well, it's still Patricia, population. you are the best person to come talk to us about this. <laughs> Patricia is a registered dietitian here at Adventist Healthcare in the Center for Fitness and Health and our Cardiac Rehabilitation at Shady Grove Medical Center. So welcome. We're going to step right into okay. sweet treats. All right. It's an exciting topic because we all love sweets, but how do mm-hmm. we control it and how do we eat in a manner that yeah. we are maintaining our body, but also not avoiding the guilty yeah. pleasures we may have. <laughs> So let's look right into it. Why do certain food go on the you know trendy food snack category and whereas others don't? And mainly it's on the unhealthy types that mm-hmm. go more popular. I love I love my Instagram. Every post I see these days is a big it's cookie, kind of cookie certain donut, t- ice cream. Yeah, just all these new and fun and exciting things. And they look delicious and we want to try them. Yeah, absolutely. I haven't seen as many um, goodies. I've actually been seeing more like healthier options. Oh, the tide's um, turning. It, yeah, I guess it depends on the different platform that you're on. In terms of becoming a trend, I think that foods, once they're seen on a popular platform like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, um, I think once they've made their appearance there, then people start to, you know, kind of wonder about it or may want to try it, you know, kind of going along with the masses. Yeah. And um, they may like it, they may not, but I think that's honestly how certain food becomes trendy. You can do so much with making things look so delicious. What strategies do you have, Patricia, to help us enjoy these types of treats guilt-free? I hate to hear that people are telling me they feel guilty oh, about okay. eating it, you know? Yeah. I certainly I mean, so, do. <laughs> I mean, I absolutely do too. But that's also if I've eaten something not so stellar prior to the oh. decadent food I'm about to consume okay. and sort of feel guilty about. But it, it, it's all in like hindsight, you know, it's like if you generally eat pretty well for the most part and you want a goodie or a dessert or maybe an entree that's not so heart healthy, it's okay to go for it. Um, as long as it doesn't become something that's habitual. Mm. If it's not something you're eating or the way you're eating every single meal, then it's okay to enjoy something that might not be on the heart healthy spectrum. But making sure, again, not to overindulge because then you may end up feeling ill or sluggish, kind of lethargic, and and you may end up feeling sort of guilty and like as if you've made a poor decision. Okay. I like what you said there, that you don't like it when people say they feel guilty. It's okay to have a little bit Mm -hmm. as long as you're balancing it out uh, too. And even if you, if you did like overindulge, like you might've eaten the entire bar of chocolate, then the next meal or the next day is a new opportunity to do better. Okay. Yeah. All right. We do the fun size bar, not the entire bar. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) That's why why Halloween is so bad. (laughs) It's all the fun size. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I got to practice moderation on that one. (laughs) Yeah. So if I'm looking for healthier options, I know there are some plant-based options, maybe yeah. some keto desserts. Mm-hmm. What are some nutritional benefits for these products or if there are there other snacks that you recommend for a healthier choice? I think that some of the trendy snacks or foods that I do see popping up, like let's say oatmeal um, versus overnight oats, the overnight oats became so trendy a few years ago. And I thought that was a really great option in terms of the plant-based or um, keto snacks or desserts. I think that um, they are good options because they do tend to have less saturated fat and trans fats than some of the other animal based products. Mm -hmm. Um, I did note that overnight oats um, became popular a few years ago and there's so many fun options that you can, you can do with, um, with that kind of, warm or cold cereal. Um, You can put fruit in it. You can even put like maybe some chocolate nibs, peanut butter, a a variety of things to make it the way you like. Even different kinds of milk can go in there too, right? Like milk alternatives. I come back even now. Mm -hmm. I think people are loving it even now. So like it's still a good healthy option. Yeah, for sure. And I also just discovered that you can still make overnight oats with steel cut oatmeal. Okay. Which I had no idea. I'd been telling my patients you couldn't because it was too hard of a grain, but you just have to warm 
warm it up in the morning to soften up the grain a little bit. But yeah, trying like different types of um, maybe like milk alternatives. If you if you decide to go from a cow milk to maybe almond milk or some other kind of plant based milk would be a good option if if you are lactose intolerant or maybe looking just for a more plant based or lower sugar uh, alternative. Right, okay. right exactly. Um, I did want to mention too. I I saw some um, high protein muffins during the Olympics. Okay, that oh. were that are still trending. I, I I see them pop up on my um, search engine. Okay, um, so I thought those are really cool because they are lower in sugar and higher in protein. They I've don't have a yeah. whole lot of... I've seen those high protein mm-hmm. um, ice creams too. I'm not sure if they're good or not, but I've seen oh, them in the grocery yes, stores as yes. well. They're, they're, some of them are, it's a hit or miss. Hit or miss, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, but I think for the most part, if you if you go into it, like trying with no expectation, then you'll be pleasantly surprised. Okay. You don't supplement ice cream from a protein shake, but <laughs> supplement that with other ice creams yeah. if needed. But yeah, yeah, there yeah. are some healthier alternatives than, mm-hmm. you know, the cookies that are as big as my head. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I still don't understand that trend. I, I did, I did, um, discover this one place that has humongous cookies <laughs> and, um, I, I don't understand, um, where or how that trend came about, but <laughs> maybe that could be something fun that you share with friends or family. Oh, um, okay. Sure. Share it. Um, well, you mentioned a couple alter. we talked a little bit about milk alternatives and overnight oats. What are some other ingredients that we can swap out for maybe that are a little healthier in some of our favorite treats. Like I've heard swapping out um, instead of sugar, like unsweetened applesauce Mm -hmm. um, or something like that. So what are some um, alternatives to traditional ingredients and sweet treats? There's a bunch of different ones you can try. Um, One that sticks out in my head um, is I did a chocolate chip cookie recipe Mm -hmm. and I took the butter out and replaced it with black beans. And yeah, and my my family did not realize that I had done it. And so I was just snickering in the back. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Because I I had not put in the butter. The texture was not crispy, but it was still a great option for reducing the fat and increasing the fiber of the of the chocolate chip cookie. Okay. It's good to know that because yeah. your family didn't realize it. So yeah, I'm gonna yeah. try that. Out. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. You can also try now this one isn't sweet but more savory. If you wanted to try like something um, replacing mayonnaise for avocado because the avocado has such a creamy consistency oh, and it avocado. spreads. Yeah. Right. And so you could always try that instead of doing like a mayo spread. Um, so there's a bunch of things like um, maybe trying different oils for the butter. Would you recommend avocado oil? Avoc- yeah, actually, avocado yeah. oil is a good one. I use that mm-hmm. yeah. daily. So yeah, okay. avocado, olive oil. Okay. Um, well, those yeah. are some great. Those are some great little little uh, swaps there. So well, we you can find the healthy alternatives. You just have to maybe do one step further to, mm-hmm. to find it. Think so. out of the box. Yeah. And okay. see what fits in your lifestyle, right? So if you oh, wanted absolutely. those cookies, like maybe look at creative ways to make that healthier. Or if yeah. you want yeah. ice cream, find those supplements for that ice cream as well. Yeah. So. Right. Or you could just do a smaller portion. A smaller portion. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we don't have to. I, I do tell patients, like when they go to serve ice cream and they really, truly want ice cream, don't serve it in a big old cereal bowl because you'll have that one scoop of ice cream that's so sad in the middle of that gigantic bowl. That scoop of ice cream is going to need friends. So instead serve your tree in a small container. And so it doesn't seem as like, lonely dis- yeah. or dissatisfying. I love that tip of, mm-hmm. of just adjusting how you serve something exactly to make it more, it might be your favorite treat and you might be used to having so much, mm-hmm. but if you just change up how you're serving it, that can make all the difference. Exactly. I love that. Yeah. You have a lot of great tidbits for yeah. us. Yeah. We really appreciate you coming oh, here. Thank I'm you. inspired to, to, uh, uh, be more forceful when my son says, yeah. where's my dessert? <laughs> oh, I love it. It's okay yeah. to have dessert after meals, as long as it's not too big. And fruit can be a dessert too. Yes, I do try to push the fruit. Yeah. yeah. I think sometimes too, though, kids might look at the fruit and think, oh, it's just fruit. But um, if you maybe cut it up into fun shapes, um, oh. like you, I, I made a swan out of my apple one time. I, very there's impressive. a way you can cut it. It's not, it's not like that big of a deal. <laughs> so it looks very um, eye catching. And so it was like something really cool for my son to eat or I can... Uh, if you cut up like a strawberry into like little slivers, yeah. it's like a sort of open flower petal. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, there's just fun little tips and tricks. I love that to, you know, you could 
have fun with your food. Like Mm -hmm. you can have fun with food and, and still be creative and still show your love through food. Absolutely. And being Um, healthy too. And being healthy at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, so I love that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Great. thank you, Patricia. You're welcome. Well, thank you for joining us today. Yeah. To learn more about Patricia and the services offered at Cardiac Rehab, please visit AdventistHealthCare.com. We would also love to hear from you. You can let us know if you like the podcast by leaving us a rating, or you can email us at podcast at AdventistHealthCare.com and let us know what other healthcare topics you will want to know about in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you can get new episodes. Thank you and be well. Be well.